So welcome to the computer graphics practice video. Uh, task is shaded chopper. Uh, this is the C++ um, video. So in this task we'll be creating. Um, well, uh, you can create the spherical um, uh, chopper and chopper with the spherical sphere. In the base code there is a cube and a sphere. So there is this uh, link here. So uh, without the chopper, your result could be something like this, but uh, I recommend you to put your uh, chopper code uh, in, the, uh, in the solution as well. So uh, in this task we uh, need to know the Fong's uh, lighting model and we'll be implementing Fong's lighting model with uh, Fong shading and garage shading. So actually garage shading will probably be the first one. Uh, so uh, the difference is that in garage shading we'll be calculating the lighting at vertices and interpolating along the face uh, the resulting color. Uh, the reason for this is that because uh, at ancient times computers uh, were uh, slower and there just wasn't enough resources to uh, calculate uh, the uh, lighting model in uh, each uh, fragment. So they did that in each uh, vertex. And in Fong shading, uh, we'll be calculating the uh, lighting at each uh, fragment. Uh, and then the result will be uh, somewhat different. So yeah, there is some additional info here. We'll be using different vectors. And I guess we can open up the base code. So um, as the info said, there is this uh, one different thing uh, which you might find interesting. So, uh, well, first of all, we have this uh, great sphere uh, method that is ported from uh, 3GS. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but if you look at this cube uh, method, then this is somewhat different because now we have this vertex data in a, whole, uh, in a big, big array and we have the position the color and the normal values uh, all in one array and uh, we can send this one array to the GPU and tell, then tell the GPU that uh, there are different uh, locations, different ways to read this array to get uh, uh, specific attributes. So uh, here this get vertex attribute pointer for example if you uh, go and um, look what this uh, method does then there is this stride and the pointer and uh, the stride here is 9 floats and uh, the position we start at element 0 uh, the color we start at element 3 and the normal we start at element 6 and stride is 9 meaning that the next element will be 9 uh, elements uh, away from uh, the first one so we read 3 um, position coordinates, then uh, nine elements from this pointer, we read the other three, and nine elements from this, we read uh, the next three, and so on. So it will read the uh, correct values from this big array with this uh, stride. So that's uh, that's pretty uh, interesting uh, way. The uh, rest of it should be uh, roughly the same. Uh, now there is this change shader method, so this will uh, switch between the two shaders. Uh, what we'll be doing is that uh, on uh, key press the shaders will be changed and you can see the difference between uh, garage shading or funk shading. And uh, yeah, uh, what we also have, we have this light. So now we need uh, a light position. And this light position uh, it uh, moves in, with those sine and cosine waves in the scene and uh, those will be in the world coordinates and we use the view matrix here uh, to multiply uh, the world coordinate and get the coordinate in a view space and then we send uh, the view space coordinate as a uniform to the shader so the thing is that in order to do those lighting calculations we need all of our coordinates, uh, vector and uh, position coordinates, to be in one space. They could be in world space, all of them, but it's uh, 
some things are more simpler and people kind of um, doesn't really matter but it's just some prefer uh, camera space or view space and we'll be using uh, view space here as well so in order to use the slide position uh, it's uh, best to convert it into view space and then send it to the shader of course you could um, convert it to view space in each instance of the shader but that will uh, be a bit of a waste of resources and uh, that's pretty much in the C++ side uh, and what we need to do is uh, actually uh, well if we build this uh, what we see is this uh, cube and this uh, spherical thing uh, totally red so what we need to do is open up the growth fragment and vertex shaders so let's cl uh, close the other ones so the growth fragment shader will be really simple it will just output the uh, interpolated color and it will do nothing uh, else but in the growth vertex shader uh, this is where we'll be uh, implementing our lighting uh, calculations now you might also notice this kind of weird things here so um, it turns out that OpenShell tends to uh, optimize out different variables uh, that don't have a use so if I would remove this uh, thing now then you would get an error uh, when you want to build um, uh, or run the uh, application because uh, it doesn't see uh, this uh, variable used and it will be removed and when you try to assign um, a value to it then, uh, then you will get an error this is why I have this hack you should remove this once you have used uh, those um, values uh, in the code okay so what do we have here we have the model view matrix although we could it would be better to like calculate this beforehand as well uh, and maybe this as well so uh, we also uh, there is this normal matrix uh, so the thing is we want to uh, move everything to camera space to move our uh, position so vertex position into camera space uh, for that we can use the model view matrix so really simple we create a new uh, vector 3 this is our vertex position and what this is is a model view matrix uh, times our uh, position was it position uh, yes our uh, input um, variable um, zero uh, position of course here we need to move the position into homogeneous space and the result of this uh, because we uh, want to operate with vector trees uh, we need to take the x, y and z coordinates uh, from the result of this uh, so this is, this is what we have done before with uh, like this kind of multiplication and so on now we just move uh, from local space to view space we don't do the projection and uh, yeah so in order to further optimize we could also like, replace this matrix here so. But um, with normals, we also need to transform the normals because if you look at the lighting model, then we need normal vectors there. With normals, it isn't uh, uh, as uh, easy uh, than just multiplying it with a model view matrix. Uh, and I recommend you to uh, read uh, this article. So I think this is linked in the uh, lecture slides as well or somewhere. So this is uh, this explains why just multiplying with your model view matrix uh, doesn't work uh, because the normal won't be perpendicular to the surface anymore and then uh, it derives a normal matrix which leaves transforms the normal from one space to another uh, but leaves the uh, leaves it perpendicular to the surface so that will be the inverse transpose of the uh, model view matrix here uh, so uh, if we look here we can take the model view matrix we uh, can make, take the inverse and transpose of it so in model view matrix the, um, the translation uh, doesn't really matter and the last line is 0, 0, 0, 001 so we kind of uh, remove those and the translation doesn't matter because if you would uh, uh, do that like uh, you, you uh, the, the vectors we have don't have like uh, a fixed location they're just direction vectors 
and so translating them uh, kind of makes uh, makes no sense. So if you have a direction, then it's the same direction if it's here or here or here or here. It still points the same way. So remove those. We take the inverse. We take the transpose, and we get the normal matrix. And what this allows us to do is to uh, create the vector tree uh, n, which is the surface normal. And uh, for that, we need to use the normal matrix um, on the normal. So the normal is given here, it's vector 3. Our normal matrix is also uh, is matrix 3. And the result, we need to normalize as well. So the n would be normalized. Now, this might be a good uh, point to kind of do a small uh, recap on the writing model. So, if you remember, we had uh, three uh, terms. So, the ambient uh, term, uh, the fuse uh, term, and the specular, uh, specular uh, term in Pong. So, uh, the ambient term was material ambient times light ambient. Diffuse term was material uh, diffused and slight diffuse, and now we have this surface normal times the vector towards the light source. So the point of the diffuse term was that if your uh, one unit of light is perpendicular to the surface, then uh, it covers uh, a small area, a smaller area than if your uh, one unit of light, same one unit here. Uh, comes at some different angle, then it covers a bigger area, so one unit of surface gets uh, less light uh, proportionally, or like uh, it's uh, dependent on the uh, angle. And in the lecture, we saw that it's dependent on the angle between the surface normal and the vector towards the light source. So if we have some uh, light source there, a point like or in a, doesn't matter what light source, then uh, this angle, uh, we need to take the cosine of that angle, and uh, this gives us the coefficient which directly affects how much light uh, this one uh, surface unit um, gets. In order to take this uh, cosine, uh, this will be the same as the dot product of those two vectors, assuming uh, that they are uh, normalized. Um, Looks like we have some uh, a bit to get a bit uh, higher view of the uh, situation here. Uh, okay, so uh, this is uh, the idea of the diffuse term, right? The ambient term is the ambient light bouncing on everywhere, and specular term is the light reflecting directly to the viewer's eye. So uh, remember from the lecture, then the specular term is material specular times light specular times uh, the dot product between the reflected light uh, vector and the uh, direction towards the viewer vector and this entire thing is raised to the power of uh, shininess so I'm going to write shine here but um, of course all of those vectors need to be normalized and uh, if this is negative then uh, we make it zero um, right. So, was there anything else? Well, really, so the idea here is that if we have a light um, comes here, uh, reflects here, so this is a reflected light vector, and if we have a viewer somewhere, um, viewer somewhere here, uh, then this would be our viewer vector, and the angle here uh, would kind of constitute or contribute to this uh, specular term of the cosine of that uh, angle. If it's uh, a smaller angle, then more light reaches directly into the eye from this direct reflection, and so this point should be brighter. If it's a bigger angle, then less light uh, reaches directly into the eye, and there is less uh, specular highlight at that point. Okay, so uh, let's get back here. Now we have the normal, we have the vertex position. Uh, what else do we need here? So from the uh, formula, we need the uh, direction towards the light source. 
So uh, for that, we kind of need, uh, we have the vertex position, so uh, we need uh, a vector from the vertex position towards the light source. And we also have the light position. Uh, so we need to do a subtraction and uh, we need uh, to subtract from the light position the vertex uh, position because our vector needs to be that if we are at the vertex position we add this uh, vector to the vertex position then we end up on the, in the light position and you can see this if you, you are um, at the vertex position you add this L to it, uh, to add this thing, so the brackets don't really matter here, the vertex position goes away and you end up in light position. So this is the correct um, vector L and uh, what we need to do with this uh, result is to normalize it. In order to use it in the dot product, this needs to be normalized. Okay, so uh, what uh, other vectors we need? So we also need uh, a director towards the viewer. Now, uh, the question here is, uh, where is the viewer? So um, maybe we want to, for simplicity, like create here a vector tree uh, viewer position and assign some value to it. Now, the question is like the viewer in camera space. So if the camera is the viewer and we're asking for the viewer's position in camera space, then this will be just the origin of the coordinate system. So basically you don't uh, really um, need this uh, variable, but uh, to like, illustrate this, I will keep it here. So the vector towards the viewer, same idea that we had with the vector towards the light, uh, we need to normalize the result and the result will be viewer position minus uh, the vertex uh, position. So if we add this thing uh, inside this normalized function to the vertex position, we end up in viewer position, we end up in the origin. Okay, and the last thing we would need is uh, the uh, reflected light vector. Now for this reflected light vector you can see uh, this uh, GLSL function reflect and if we go to the uh, manual it says it calculates the reflection direction for an incident vector. Now what is an incident vector? It's a vector that uh, points towards the point where we want to uh, reflect it from. Uh, we also need the surface normal. So um, uh, we can use this reflect uh, function. Uh, the surface normal is the second parameter and the question is what is the first parameter? So uh, vector L is from the current point towards the light source. So what we need is the incident vector, so that will be the opposite vector from L, so minus L. And this is L, not one. So minus L uh, is the incident vector which we reflect uh, with this on this surface with this normal and it will give us the reflected vector. Okay and now what we can do is we can start uh, calculating this interpolated uh, color using uh, Fong's uh, lighting model. So uh, before we do that, let's look back here. So we have different like, material uh, and uh, light uh, properties here. We have all of the vectors, well, this uh, shininess exponent we can just write, we, we can put it in a variable as well if you want. So what we have here is material diffuse and material ambient. So the material ambient uh, usually is the same as material diffuse, so it reflects the same amount of light, uh, same, uh, same wavelengths uh, of ambient light as it does the diffuse light. So basically we would just bring this uh, over here and now we have light ambient plus light diffuse uh, times n and uh, epsilon. Um, another assumption we can do here is that let's, uh, let's not uh, uh, have, let's just have a white light so uh, this diffuse part isn't going to color anything, this will just be one. 
And this ambient term, uh, this will be something small, so something like 0 point, uh, I don't know, 0.5, maybe 0 0.1, we'll see uh, which value uh, fits best. Now, uh, for the specular term, uh, you can read from the material that you want the, the specular reflection of the material usually to be white. So the thing is, this is the direct reflection of the light source from the material. So uh, it doesn't, the, the material's color usually doesn't contribute to this. So it, uh, this will usually be white. So, um, you, so you will see the reflection. Uh, and the light uh, part, uh, this we can also like just say it's one, so that uh, we have this uh, full specular highlight and we can see it. So uh, much of those terms uh, really uh, go away here. And uh, yeah, so uh, let's see. All we need like is this M, and what this M is is the actual color of our material currently. So um, one more note about the specular highlight that I just mentioned. So you can go to materials, and if you have like the specular color the same uh, as the diffuse color, like you see here, then you don't see the specular highlight but the specular color should be white, so that you see the specular highlight. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do here? We, let's uh, start with kind of the diffuse part. So we have the color and we want to multiply uh, that color with uh, the dot product uh, of uh, the surface normal and the vector towards the light source. Now we have used normal I guess I can kind of maybe uh, remove that as well. Uh, let's see what happens um, if we have done this. Yeah, so um, I got this uh, interesting uh, looking result here. Um, and no uh, errors. So if the light goes behind the spheres, uh, the sphere and the cube, then this should be um, correct. Now, what we definitely do want to uh, have here as well is, if this dot product is uh, negative, we want it to be uh, um, zero. And um, what else we want? We want some sort of an ambient term. And let's make it something uh, small, I don't know, 0.1, uh, plus this diffuse term, and this is our color uh, here. Of course, you can always make, you could, Instead of this, you would just write like, okay, we have the we have the ambient color, so let's uh, put color uh, here as well. We have the diffuse color. This is the ambient term. This is the diffuse term. So that would resemble more like uh, the formula uh, on the material uh, materials. But uh, let's, uh, for simplicity, we can uh, make it like this. And if we now look at this. Um, still a bit uh, dark, but it's uh, not that as black as it was uh, before. So uh, this could be, uh, this could be uh, okay. And now lastly, what we want to do here is add the specular term. So this will be also the dot product of the viewer, um, or let's say the reflected light direction at the viewer. So if, they are, uh, if the angle is uh, small, then this would be one, or near one, um, the light directly uh, reflects into the eye. If it's larger, then it will be uh, a smaller number. And uh, we want to raise this to the power of some uh, shininess value. So for example, we could use 150 and uh, see uh, what happens uh, with that. And it uh, looks like there is this small problem here. So uh, this uh, is caused uh, by the uh, fact that we have forgotten the maximum of zero. And that so this became maybe negative and thus we got some uh, weird black uh, results. And with this maximum, uh, this is uh, much better. So let's see if we can spot the specular highlight. Not really well, so maybe if we have a smaller exponent here, 
we could see it a bit better, yeah, so mm, now you could kind of see that there is this specular highlight at certain uh, places here. So what else you can do is, uh, in the comments it says, use 200 uh, for the uh, shininess value, but you can also like go to this main CPP, and if you find this uh, great sphere call, uh, you could write uh, like 48, uh, for example, into these uh, two uh, attributes or parameters, and then uh, you will create a sphere that has like more vertices. So it's a bit more uh, visually a bit better to see. Uh, this kind of resembles the image on the uh, task description. So uh, you can see that the specular highlight is where the light a, a kind of reflects into your eye from the surface and uh, the brighter spot is, is from is kind of the hemisphere from where the light uh, is shining on the, on the sphere. So yeah, this is pretty much about the grow shading. So uh, your kind of um, task is to implement this grow shading and then implement also uh, Fong uh, shading. So with uh, Fong shading you will implement like the Fong's uh, lighting model that we just implemented here in the uh, fragment shader in the Fong frag uh, GLSL file. Uh, one thing to note there is that if you want like the surface normal and you uh, interpolate the normal between the vertices then it's, uh, it's really important to uh, understand that uh, let's say you have uh, two uh, normals, right? So you have uh, just some arbitrary normals, but uh, uh, let's say you have zero, um, uh, one, zero, so this is of unit length, and you have one, zero, zero, this is also of unit length, so this normal and that normal. And now you interpolate between them, and um, say there are two vertices, one has normal this way and other this way, and you interpolate uh, along the surface. So the middle fragment uh, there will get the value uh, 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.5 and 0, right? And uh, because of uh, the interpolation. Uh, this half of one and half of another if the fragment is, is directly halfway between the two. So uh, what you notice here is that this is no longer normalized. So please keep that in mind that in the fragment shader you need to account for uh, this case that when you interpolate the normals the result uh, is not normalized. Okay, but um, Oh, yeah, and uh, if you have implemented both of the uh, shading models, then in the task there is this uh, question that you should describe uh, why the corroded uh, shading is missing a specular highlight on the back wall. So the result, uh, let's see if in this result, uh, yeah, in this result it's also there, so there is this highlight on the wall. Uh, and also on this uh, cube here and just to explain uh, why are the highlights on the cube and on the walls uh, with corroded shading. And yeah, so that's, um, uh, that's pretty much it and I hope you have an interesting um, time with this task. Uh, be sure to uh, think about in terms of those vectors. So. Uh, you have this vertex and you have like the surface normal, the vector of light source, the vector of reflected light and so on. Uh, all of those vectors, if you, if you can really like uh, think about those when you're doing some kind of lighting calculations or visual effects, then this will, uh, this will really help you because uh, they, those, these vectors are used in all sorts of different um, uh, computer graphics algorithms. Okay.